Well, first of all, hi, Mary. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Ted? I'm doing really well. Hey, so uh, first of all, I think I'm congratu contractually, that's the word I was looking for, obligated to ask, how you doing? How is everything going with uh, the pandemic? Are you staying safe? Are you staying sane? I am see yeah, I'm trying to do both <laughs> for sure. Uh, luckily, um, tonight I'm driving up and uh, quarantining and my friend has a cabin up in uh, Tahoe. Oh, so nice. Go there for a little bit. So I'm trying to, you know, do do things like that to to stay out, you know, so I'm not stuck inside all the time. But Great. And yeah. so you're California based. Is that right? Yeah, I'm in San Diego. Oh, the most beautiful spot in the yeah. world. That's awesome. <laughs> I can't um, so how are you guys handling the heat? I know at least here in Northern and Central California, it's been in the hundreds for the last couple of days. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely been uh, heating up here, especially today. It's been really hot. I mean, I definitely like the heat. So again, can't complain, but uh, yeah, it's, it's good enough there. So again, escaping to the north, hopefully it get, it's a little cooler, but it is inland. Yeah. It's probably going to be really hot there too. So yeah, but maybe there's the lakeside breeze. Uh, yeah, who knows? At least I could jump in the, in the water. <laughs> yeah. So just for those of you folks who are watching who don't know who Mary Gibbs is, um, A, shame on you, and B, um, she was very early in her life uh, a very important part of most of our lives, I would expect. Oh. Um, and if you're not familiar with her, I think one word will probably um, explain that to you, and it's the word kitty. Um, of course, she was the voice actress who played Boo in Monsters, Inc., and then uh, you've portrayed Boo in a couple other uh, performances as well. Um, what was your experience with that? Obviously, you're three years old when it was recorded. We're mm -hmm. coming up on, I think this was the 20th anniversary of you doing the recording. Yeah, yeah. So next I year. Was three. So I, I was two and a half to three and a half when I did the recording, but five yeah. when it came out in 2001. So Gotcha. Yeah, coming so, up. Uh, I don't know, time flies, but. 20th <laughs> anniversary here coming up. Um, so Kitty is kind of one of those lines that most people, when they hear it or they imagine it, that's one of those, oh, I'm going to cry moments, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you have one of those moments in your life, one of those lines from a movie or for something that every time you hear it kind of makes you just get a little uh -huh. soft on the inside? I mean, I think every Pixar movie, um, you know, especially, I remember my dad, you know, he's talking to me about the production of all the movies, you know, and he explained just the basic curve of a movie, you know, how you have to have a climax, and there's always that sad part, and then the the resolution and all that, and so, I mean, I think every Pixar movie, I always have that, like, oh, <laughs> you know, uh, but, yeah, I mean, a specific line isn't jumping out to me, I think just, like, animation animated movies as a whole i mean they always make me cry at some point so gotcha yeah. <laughs> gotcha now if we had to take monsters inc out of the picture do you have a, a favorite pixar or disney movie yeah i think my favorite pixar movie is wally mm. uh, i also i talked a little bit about i have a vlog i talked a little bit about it um but i i was in middle school and my dad was working on wally and so i have the right. most recollection of the production of Wally, -E and you know that was really cool seeing the behind the scenes and then getting to see the movie and I love the story behind it and yeah so I think Wally -E is definitely my gotcha. favorite movie. Yes speaking of your vlog um, I actually found it and you now have 140 subscribers uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's only like a month old right I mean yeah, you've been doing just, this like I four weeks. It. Yeah I think I, I just released my fifth vlog so I'm oh, doing it sorry, every fifth. Wednesday. No, no, you're good. Um, so yeah, it's it's been fun. I've been wanting to do a vlog for a while, and I just figured, why not just sit down and do it? Quarantine is a good time to start that for sure. Absolutely, so. I was going to ask, is this your like your big quarantine project? Or are you yeah, doing anything yeah. else? I mean, I'm definitely. Um, I like working on little animations and video editing, and I'm helping a friend do some graphics for this company he's doing photography for, and you know, trying to do some projects like that and just stay creative and. Uh, you know, keep my mind busy, <laughs> you know. That's awesome. So um, again, for those of you who aren't uh, aware, uh, and it's it's only been five episodes now, so it's it's not been out there for a super long time, but it's 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 called Boo Grown Up, is that right? Yeah, it's called Boo Grown Up, and it's pretty much, I uh, throw some Boo-related stuff, like I just 
talked about my take on the Pixar theory. Which I was not aware of until today, and now uh, yes. I'm going to probably have to do a deep dive on that. Yeah, it's a rabbit hole to go Put into. my tinfoil hat on, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's super interesting, and so, yeah, I just did that, but then I also include, like, things of my life, so um, let's see, I did, like, my volunteer experience um, in the Dominican Republic and things like that, my scoliosis journey, so it's kind of yeah. incorporating things in my life that I think could help other people, and then related things as well. But. Well, you just kind of led me into my next question, actually, which was um, your experience in the DR. Um, obviously, you're, you were a teenage kid. You were in high school, I want to say. Um, how did that sort of affect your view now on the rest of the world, right? I mean, you grew up in California. You grew up sort of in the system. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it, it definitely popped that little bubble. I think it's a uh, you know, it's really important to actually go and see how people live. And, you know, it's it's nice to to go and stay in a resort and, you know, and do all that, sure. But it's also nice to actually live with a host family and, like, live with them and, you know, not have electricity for two months and see how that is. And, um, right. yeah, I mean, it was pretty – I mean, I was three miles from the Haitian border, and there's really big tension between Dominican Republic and Haiti. And I would see, like, a deportation bus – literally looked like a zoo cage on wheels like stuffed full of people like it, it's it was crazy and like seeing that young I mean it was a lot but it, it definitely you know taught me that not everyone lives like a little white girl in California you know right. <laughs> to put it bluntly but yeah. um so are you still in touch with the family that you lived with I am not in touch with them I am in touch with a couple of the um there was like volunteer coordinator kind of people that would work with us who live in the Dominican Republic and I'm friends with them on Facebook which is right. cool. um so yeah but not with the actual family but it was really it gotcha. was a good experience while I was there definitely so kind of going on from that so you, you grew up in California you know you're you're sort of in the the Pixar and and uh, Lucas Lucas Arts or Disney um your Pixar. dad was Pixar and then yeah. your dad also worked for Disney? Yeah, so he started okay. out at Disney um, like when he first started 30 something years ago and right. then he moved up to Northern California. Pixar's in Emeryville. Uh, Lucasfilms is also in Northern California. But right, right, right. And uh, yeah, then Disney bought Pixar, you know, down the road. So he technically worked for Disney again. So gotcha. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you, you grew up sort of with the, with the storyboard artist, right? As a, for a father. Yeah. Is that, is that right? And so you 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 grew up sort of around the Pixar world. Um, you've done voice acting in both uh, Monsters Inc. and then a couple of associated games and videos, right? Yeah, yeah. And then they also because um, I, I was in the recording studio from two and a half to three and a half, and normally they have older people do kids' voices just so that because they can right. actually direct them. Um, so this was like they didn't actually have a lot of you know, actual little girls. So they had all this foot, um, this footage of me, uh, or not footage, but audio tracks or whatever. Right. And um, they used my voice for Baby Riley and Inside Out and like Baby Nala and Lion King One and a Half. Like there was some random, like my laughs and cries are in some random movies. And then, yeah, they, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 was uh, the big one that they just used my voice in again but right. I don't have to go in and re-record it which is nice they just I was gonna say so these are all still the recordings from like two and a half year old to three yeah. and a half year old Mary exactly. so that's great I mean look something you did 20 years ago is, know, is living I'm, on I'm riding the wave you know <laughs> um when they release these new sort of you know, so in, in Inside Out, did they let you know, hey, you're going to be in this movie, or yeah, did yeah. it just kind of come as a surprise? Thing, okay. Is, yeah, so, yeah, it's it's cool. I'm like, That's go. awesome. <laughs> hey, still paying dividends uh, in residuals, I hope. Yeah, um, yeah. All the way, you know, 20 years later. That's great. Not a lot of people can say that. Yeah. Um, so, I, I'm wondering if Mike, if we have any questions from from the viewers, if we want to gather some while we're while we're having our conversation here. Um, oh, look, there's a puppy in the background. Hi, puppy. Oh, you see Maple. Maple. <laughs> What's the dog's name? Maple. Maple. Hi, Maple. Yes. Um, so what have you been doing uh, during the quarantine? Have you been doing anything uh, other than just trying to stay alive? Yeah, well, um, so right before the quarantine, uh, I was 
pretty excited. I was learning to be a high rigger for setting up concerts. So I was like, the oh, wow. Three feet in the air, like pulling everything up, which was really fun. The first concert I was going to set up was Rolling Stones and then Pearl Jam was coming and Ozzy Osbourne, but it all got delayed, you know, yeah. so luckily I'm still going to do that when, whenever it picks up, when the world opens back up again. Um, but no, during quarantine, um, you know, I have a company in LA that I do social media for and, and photography for, so I, that's been keeping me busy a lot. And, you know, I've been doing projects. So like I started getting into sewing, started sewing my own clothes. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, and just staying creative, staying busy, little, uh, little things like that. So yeah. now yesterday we had, um, C. Andrew Nelson on oh, nice. and, uh, he mentioned something about heroes of extension or extinction. Yes. yes I was going to mention that too. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about that? Are you allowed? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, they're thinking it's going to be released. Christmas time is the goal, but, uh, heroes of extinction, it's an audio show. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of like a podcast and it's about a hero that as he gets older he's losing his powers and uh, I'm going to be playing a character in it called, uh, named Janessa so that's Janessa. Really exciting and uh, yeah that should be released soon I'm, I'm going to be talking more about that on my blog and I'm sure everybody else who's involved will be too as we uh, know more about the final date but uh, that's been really fun we read script one and it's awesome um, really excited to read the rest of the scripts but and this is like an audio drama, so is there going to be like the full kind of Foley art and everything? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. And it's um, right now, uh, Andrew and his friend Jerry, they, they are kind of, um, Jerry has a video platform, kind of like a Netflix. He has a lot of um, viewers on that, and that's where it's going to be airing, ori airing originally. And I know they want to end up pitching it to Netflix, and so who knows yeah. where it'll go. But uh, yeah, I always said I, I don't want to get back into voice acting or I'm not going to go and search for a role actively, but if one comes to me, if it, that's like meant to be, you know, of course, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. uh, I'll take that opportunity. So this is a good way to kind of get back into it and, you know, see how it goes. But that's yeah. awesome. So yeah. I do, I, I, I do see a question coming through. Um, so it looks like, is that, is that boo there on your, on it your. It is. Yeah. So actually, um, yeah. So like I said, or like you said, uh, my dad was a storyboard artist at Pixar. Yeah. And he just passed away in April. Oh, I'm sorry um, to hear that. That's okay. But this uh, is a, an original storyboard of his. Oh. A boo kind of running around, and I got a signature. So yeah, I always wanted like a boo-related tattoo, but uh, this is a uh, definitely a special. It's a little special piece of your dad that you get to carry yeah. around with you forever. That's awesome. I love it. So I just got that not too long ago. Yeah. So. so yeah. So you're down in San Diego. You're you're working in in in, in rigging, and uh, you're going to be climbing up 50 feet in the air. Yeah, I do um, like a lot of yeah, a lot of random stuff. That's one of the jobs. But I'm also uh, school starting for me in a couple weeks. Um, I've been I we went to school for a few years, took a couple years off, and I'm going back. Um, going to be doing kinesiology to then. Oh, get awesome! Therapy is the long down in San Diego or yeah, yeah, I'll be in uh yeah San Diego for that. So that's amazing. Yeah. So. Um, you're in a bit of a unique situation where obviously, you know, you kind of right place, right time. Your dad was a storyboard artist and he said, Hey, I know a three-year-old. Um, what advice can you give to someone given your unique situation? What advice can you give to someone who might want to get into the, the voice yeah. acting world? Yeah. So since I can't really answer this, I have asked other, sure. I've met a lot of actors that Comic Cons when I go, which is awesome. It's a lot of fun. And I always ask them, how did you get into voice acting? And there's really two sides of the coin. You know, I talked to one guy who was a blue power ranger <laughs> and he went on to go do a couple other roles, but he said he went to like over 950 auditions mm -hmm. and heard no 950 times. And on the 951st time he heard yes. And that kind of, you know, took off. So, you know, one piece of advice is, you know, you could be that person and be really persistent. And, you know, if you have that goal, you know, don't get discouraged when you're told no, because I've heard plenty of times where people are told no a million times and then they sure. hear yes, you know. And then there's the other side where is honestly a majority, which is a little discouraging for some people, but, you know, it's just, you have to look for the, the right open doors. But the other, like 80% of the people I talk to, it's, right place at the right time. You know, my friend suggests me to this person and I tried out or 
I just saw the flyer and I thought, oh, it was like right next door and I walked in and I got the part or, you know, it's always like some random event that happened. So, I mean, right. you know, it, it, be persistent, but also like keep an eye out for those open doors and like those opportunities because they're everywhere. You know, it's all about people, you know, too. So expand your network. But, sure. Yeah. So given given kind of your your history with with pixar are you in touch with folks still at pixar i mean your dad was a storyboard artist there for a long time and at, and at disney are you still in touch sort of with the pixar family yeah i mean i'm facebook friends you know with uh people in pixar that you know have been at pixar for a while and sure you know i'm not like talking to them all the time but like you know went to a holiday party around christmas time and there was like director of the little mermaid and and beauty and the beast like right there you know right crazy so you know right. I, I have still connections to the pixar family you know which is which is really nice you know some of our really good friends um they they still work there and are really involved so yeah Got that's it. really nice well definitely i mean obviously it's it's not the total of your life right i mean you've got yeah. you 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 had the opportunity to be chased around with a microphone for, for, you know, what, almost a year. Yeah. Um, and obviously you've lived a life beyond that. Um, I've got a 15 year old daughter and I've got a 12 year old daughter. Mm -hmm. And um, what advice would you give to them if just on how to be a whole human on how to live your best life on how to kind of just survive in the world? Yeah. Well, I know, when I was 12 through 15, probably through 17, so that's a hard age <laughs> for one. Yeah. But I mean, I was really concerned with what people thought of me, you know, obviously every, everyone is. Um, but I guess really the more that you can let that go and kind of change your perspective of what really matters. And I don't know, I mean, another thing is just to always like keep learning and keep growing, you know, always like, you know, I'm always trying to learn random life skills. <laughs> like, you know, that's just another thing that comes to mind. But uh, yeah, the biggest one is just care less about what people think, which is 100% easier said than done. I know that I've lived through that. And you probably won't understand that until you like grow up and get older, you know. <laughs> I'm 47 years old and it's still a struggle for me. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, um, really and I think dreadlocks helped a lot because you, you have to embrace the fact that you know you can't care about what people think <laughs> but it's little things where you just like little lessons throughout your life where you just kind of have to i don't know but yeah again it's a it's a lifelong it's a lifelong struggle <laughs> but i don't know just Got really it. especially now like with everything going on i guess third piece of advice <laughs> uh you know how i stay sane really is like shifting your perspective of like you know kind of stepping outside and not trying to get involved in like the news and everything and just stepping outside and like knowing things are gonna gonna turn out okay yeah <laughs> one way or another <laughs> i don't know <sighs> so we we've only got just a couple of minutes left here and i really appreciate you taking the time to do this before you head out yeah. um i wanted to know um where can people find you online you know obviously you've got your blog uh, yeah. boo grown up yeah, yeah. So it's Boo Grown Up on YouTube. And then on Instagram, Mary M. Gibbs is like my more personal page. I do post like Boo stuff on it. But then there's Boo Grown Up, um, all by separated by uh, underscores on Instagram. So Boo underscore grown underscore up. On yeah, so Instagram. on Instagram as well. And that's like, I post more Comic Cons. I haven't posted in a while for that, obviously, because there's no Comic Cons happening right now. Yeah, because the world has kind of stopped. Yeah, exactly. But Mary M. Gibbs or Boo Grown Up on YouTube would be the, the main ways to see what I'm up to. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to check again with our moderator here. Have we found any other questions? No? All right. So I'm going to ask at least one or two more questions here that I'm going to have to kind of make up on the spot. Um, so you've done shows. I think the first time I don't I don't know if we met, but I know you've done MouseCon um, yeah, at done least once. Times, I think was that your first show? That's a good question. I that, I don't think that was my first show. I started Comic Cons a couple years ago. CelebWorks reached out to me. That's mm -hmm. my management company. Um, but 
I know when I first started, I did three big ones right away. There was one in Fort Lauderdale in Florida, San Antonio, Texas, and one other. And I think one of those was my first, maybe. Gotcha. But How do you... But they've been, yeah, they've been fun. Do you enjoy the shows? Do you think that you're kind of... How do people approach you? How do people react to you when they see uh, a, a grown ass woman, if you will, yeah. you know, who, you know, they, they, they might see as just this little, you know, toddler yeah, well, baby. A lot of people expect me to be older actually, because like I said, a lot of older people do kids voices. And I think that's what they expected boo, like what happened with boo. And so they expect me to be older. Um, but yeah, it's really nice because I'm able to connect with people who are my age, who have grown up with the movie you know, grandparents come right. up and connect because they have memories of showing their kids the movie. And then kids my age are now having kids and showing their kids. So it's cool to see all the generations right. like that I could connect with. And it's state, it's still relevant somehow, which is cool. And just seeing how it has affected so many people. And I'll just like one, one cool story, which is it just random. Cause again, it's been so many years and I just don't even know how I could still be writing this way. But I was in the bathroom washing my hands at a Comic-Con and I have a, a guest badge on and my name is facing me so my name tags flipped over and this girl's next to me kind of looking at me weird and she asked me to like to flip my name tag over and I flip it over and it says Mary Gibbs boo and she just starts crying and I was like oh wow <laughs> like I don't know you know and I, I've gotten all sorts of reactions you know I've gotten that you know some people just don't care some people scream you know and it, it just it's interesting seeing the the range like the the range of uh, reactions and just comic cons in general are a lot of fun I get to connect with people who come up and talk to me, the other actors who are there, it's just mind blowing who I get to meet, you know, it's really cool. So yeah, it's just a great experience all around. I love it. Uh, who was kind of the, like the, oh my God moment um, when you're at a convention and you turn around and there's yeah, so somebody. I, and people always ask me like, what's, what did you love? Like, what's your fandom growing up? Like, what did you obsess over? And I, I didn't really right. have like, any characters that I just absolutely loved but the two actors that i've met at comic cons who i had that moment was goofy the voice of goofy and the voice of barney <laughs> and i don't know it's why bill farmer um, right bob, yeah bill farmer and bob west and like i don't know why it just i had a connection with barney when i was little and just goofy yeah. too. and it was just like the, those two moments i was like you know, I don't even know what to say. So yeah, that was, that was really cool. And my dad was actually at a Comic-Con with me and Barney. And my dad's gone to a couple Comic-Cons and um, done storyboard artists or like, you know, storyboard drawings for people. There you go. And he did a drawing of Barney holding Boo. And instead of I love you that Barney sings, it said I love Boo. And it was the, oh. just a good moment. Yeah. So that was really fun. <laughs> um, so we've got two questions that have come in. Uh, Kikio wants to know if there was anything that you learned several years later after your first movie voice acting that you just consider as a normal thing that other people find as like a super skill. I guess, I mean, I've, maybe it's subconsciously related to like me being boo, but I've always been really comfortable with public speaking mm -hmm. and like being in front of a camera and like talking on the spot about things and you know maybe that's not I don't know the word he needs like super skill but you know I guess that's one thing that maybe because of boo I'm more comfortable with that some people gotcha. get like freaked out about I guess gotcha. that's the first thing that comes to mind and then we've got one more question here from the audience how how is it how does it feel when you see someone cosplaying or dressing up as Boo or a little kid coming up dressed as Boo to, to meet you? How does that, how does that affect you? It's, a, it's, it makes me really happy. I don't know. It's just really cool to see. And every time I see, you know, a little girl or any, any age dressed up as Boo or, you know, I've seen families dressed up as Mike Soley and Boo, you know, and right. I, would, I always take a picture with them. And I remember even I was in New Orleans for my birthday during Halloween. So everyone's dressed up and I saw a family dressed as Boo, Mike and Soley, and I had to go over and tell them and, you know, take a picture. And it's, it, you know, cool. it's a, it's a fun, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool to see. Definitely. That's awesome. Yeah. So again, just to kind of circle back. So um, Boo Grown Up on on YouTube. It's a vlog that comes out on Wednesday. Every Wednesday, yes. Uh, your Instagram is uh, Boo Great. underscore. Oh yeah, Boo underscore Grown underscore Up for the Boo uh -huh. or Mary M Gibbs. Mary, Mary M Gibbs. Name so Mary M Gibbs. There you go. 
Instagram. Well, Mary, it's been a, an absolute pleasure getting to know you, even if it's just been for these, this last yeah, half hour. Um, I, I look forward to hopefully seeing you at uh, another convention, hopefully when the world starts spinning yeah. again. Yeah, exactly. Um, be safe. Yeah, you too. Be good and uh, enjoy Tahoe. Thank you. I'm excited.